Well, good evening. I'm never quite sure where to stand in this, so I might move around a little bit. Uh, but before we um, think of anything more, let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reminder that in you there is light. And as we uh, think about that more this evening, I ask that uh, these words that I prepared um, will be words that are from you. And those that aren't, will fall by the wayside. Help us to hear your voice this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. As I said, it's quite difficult to know quite where to stand in this, and I did consider getting one of those spinny chairs and sitting on it, and then I thought, no, that, that's just a little bit silly, although that is the sort of thing I would do. But anyway, we are thinking this evening about light unsurprisingly. And isn't it amazing to have the light just gradually grow um, throughout the evening? I hadn't noticed until I turned around the candles in the chancel, the candles all around us, these lights just beginning to give us more and more light. And isn't it also beautiful to be reminded um, of the way that that theme of light is found throughout Scripture? You know, tracing right, all, right from Genesis all the way to the end, to Revelation. God's light is there in the past. It's there in the present. And of course, it will be there in the future. And that's what we're going to be thinking about this evening. The past, the present, and the future. Or if you prefer the past, the present, and the future, depending on uh, whichever you prefer. But I'm going to say past. Um, right at the start, we heard in that reading from Genesis 1, God said, let there be light. And there was light. It's only in God's words, isn't it? As, as God speaks, that light comes. He is the author. He is the originator of light. This week, um, those of us who are clergy had a, a study day uh, with the bishop on science and faith. And it was really inspiring, if not a little brain challenging at times. Um, after lunch particularly, I was trying to keep alert. But it was good to be reminded of, of God's authoring of creation, including light. To think about the awe-inspiring and sometimes mind-boggling reach of the universe. To think about light years, how light can travel so far, and yet God created it all. But as I was reading uh, the first chapter of Genesis, and in that order of creation, whether, whether you might believe in a seven-day creation literally or not, I was really struck by the fact that on day one, God creates light. But it's not until day four that God creates the sun, the moon, and the stars. I don't know whether you've ever really noticed that before. God creates light on day one, but it's not until later that we see the sun, the moon, and the stars. The light is there before the sun. We'll come back to that later. I want to challenge you that if you've never really gazed at the stars, do. In some ways now, we only see a glimpse, don't we, of, of what would have been before we added man-made light pollution. But if you get yourself into a dark place, if you find yourself in the countryside or maybe in, a, in another country, it is incredible to look up, to see the stars, to see the light that God made. And it reminds us of just how awesome our God is, the creator of light. I was reminded of this joke. After God created 24 hours of alternating darkness and light, one of the angels asked him, what are you going to do now? God said, I think I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> I'm so glad some of you laughed. It's always a moment when you tell a joke, isn't there? <sighs> Well, of course, in some senses, he did. He did call it a day, but not in another way, because he kept going for quite a few more, created so much more. But of course, we know what happens. We know 
But it didn't end there. We know the problem because we find out later on in Genesis that sin entered the world and darkness was there in a more metaphorical sense. However, as we heard in our readings, a light was promised. Isaiah 60 verses 1 to 3 says, a light has dawned. And then in John 1, a light came into the darkness. Jesus, the light of the world. Jesus came as a light, a light which won't go out into a world characterized by darkness. Yet what Jesus brought was a light which will not be overcome by darkness, a light which won't be put out. It always reminds me of those magic candles that you might give to a child um, and just to see what happens when they blow it out and it relights. That sense that this light will not be put out. John 1 says this, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Even when Jesus died, his light would return. Did you know that a light, a candlelight, doesn't have a shadow? Have a look next time you're near a candle. There's plenty of them around for you to check this with. There is literally no darkness in a candle. And that is what we see in Jesus, in what Jesus came to do to bring the light of life. So that's a bit about the past. But what about now? And I'm going to move over there just to make a point. Also, so I can see different people. Let's think a little bit about the present. Some of our readings today talk about walking in the light, which is vital, isn't it, in so many ways. If we walk in the dark, well, it doesn't end well. Let me tell you a story. Um, a few years ago, I was on holiday, and I was very fortunate to be able to go to Sri Lanka with my friend. And we travelled around the, the, the nation, and we ended up on the south coast in a very nice hotel, very nice hotel. And on our first night, we decided that we would go out for dinner, mainly because it was very expensive in the hotel. So we went out the front gate, and the, the, the men on the gate said, would you like us to get you a tuk-tuk? And we said, no, we don't know that. We don't need that. We know where we're going. We'll get onto the road and we'll walk. It's not far. Oh, I wish we had listened. And so we went out um, onto the main road, which was completely dark, no street lights, a main road at that. We crossed over and we walked. We walked following the, the, uh, the you know, the cars are coming towards us. We were on the correct side of the road. And we walked, and, and we walked, <laughs> and we walked. And after a while, we thought, this restaurant is not as close as we thought. Turned out I'd actually read the map wrong, and it was about four miles. <laughs> but never mind. <coughs> Don't ask me to direct you anywhere, let's put it like that. But um, we got to a point when we thought, do you know what? I think we need to cross over and come back. So we eventually crossed the road, and we turned back, and we thought, we'll go back to the hotel. We'll either get a tuk-tuk to this restaurant or we'll, um, we'll eat in the, re in the hotel. And then I was leading my friend and I was walking along. It was completely dark, completely pitch black. And as I was walking, there was just suddenly no pavement. No pavement whatsoever. And I went down like a load of spuds or something along those lines. And I heard a crack. And I thought for a moment I'd broken my ankle. But I don't think I did. I think I just uh, tore a ligament or something like that. But it was very painful, and I could not move. And um, I couldn't really walk, and I was in a lot of pain and quite a lot of shock. But thankfully, a tuk-tuk driver took pity on us, took us back to the hotel for free. And then the hotel cared for me with ice um, and an umbrella so that I could still sunbathe, but keep my foot cool. Um, and the rest of the holiday, I was hobbling around. Walking in the darkness does not end well. I can tell you that from experience. Listen to these words from 1 John. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies, purifies us from all sin. 
it is far better to walk in the light, to walk knowing that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Because not only do we have fellowship with God our Father in that, we have fellowship with one another. We find freedom, we find forgiveness. Maybe that's something for you today. Maybe you don't know Jesus yet. Well, here's your chance to get to know the light of the world. But there's a challenge, isn't there, for us to continue to walk in that light. One of those is, is about us getting to know Jesus, the light of the world, better through reading his word, through praying, not just on a Sunday. And of course, when we walk in the light, we reflect that light, which means that we shine the light of Jesus every day, reflecting the glory and the light of Jesus now. So I want to challenge you. How are you uh, living as a disciple each day of the week? How might you shine God's light in your workplace, in your school, with your family, on your street? Last week, we thought about how we might serve in this place. But of course, our call is to be out there in the world. Sunday isn't enough. When we light a candle at a baptism, we say these words, shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. But of course, sometimes walking in the light can be difficult. When we think of darkness, we're not just thinking about literal darkness, but metaphorical darkness. And we started with Psalm 88, a psalm of lament, finishing with these words, darkness is my closest friend. How many of us have felt like that at times? A sense of being in a dark pit, no light to be found. Or at least we feel that way. But God is light. And in him there is no darkness. He is there. And sometimes all we can do is trust that he is there. We can hold on to the past that Jesus came to bring his light, to shine his light. And we can look to the future, to hold on to the future hope. I'm going to move again. And so finally, we think about the future. I said at the start the light was there before the sun and the moon and so on. And when we get to Revelation 21, we see that there is no longer any need for the sun or the moon. I don't know whether you've ever seen that before. I was struck by those words this week. But I don't know how you feel about there being no longer any need for the sun. Personally, I love the sun. I love its warmth. I love nothing more than sunbathing, reading a good book by a pool. But of course... This means so much more than a holiday on the Costa del Sol, doesn't it? Not that that's where I go on holiday. What we have awaiting us is no darkness at all. That reading in Revelation 21 um, depicts a holy city, which is a place of light. There is no night. All because God is there and because God provides the light, because God is light. We read in that verse, in those verses, that the city can never shut and it can't shut because of God's light. No night um, means that a city doesn't need to shut to keep things out that shouldn't be there. The city remains open. Amazing is that picture that we know that God is light, but so much so that his light never goes out, that there is no place for darkness. Because where there is light, there literally can be no darkness, no place for anything bad. Verse 27 of Revelation 21 says, Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. 
There's a promise of this in the Old Testament. We heard from Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 3, but in verse 20, it says this, Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. I just love the image that the city doesn't need the sun or the moon to shine on it because of the glory of God giving its light and because the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. And that is what is awaiting us. That is what is awaiting those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, i.e. those of us who have given our lives to Jesus. So what we find out by looking through Scripture at this theme of light is just beautiful. We know that Jesus, the light of the world, will return And scripture reminds us that we need to walk in the light. We need to live for him and help others to know Jesus' light, to shine his light, so that their names can also be written in this book of life. But we can also walk in this light knowing that there is an everlasting light which will never go out and which will never fade. Isn't that good news? this evening.